Hello, and welcome to Dark and Stormy Book Club. Today we talk with our old friend, Lee Goldberg. Enjoy. I'm Ann Dark. I'm Tracy Stormy. And I'm Kathy Knight. And together we are It Was a Dark and Stormy Book Club, a podcast for mystery lovers. Welcome. If you enjoy our show, please consider contributing to the Dark and Stormy Patreon. By becoming a patron, you will help us create better and quality content. There are also benefits to becoming a patron, such as exclusive content and Dark and Stormy merchandise. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash darkandstormybc. Check our website for the link. We appreciate any and all contributions. Thank you. Malibu Burning by Lee Goldberg is number one in his new Sharp and Walker book series. It was published by Thomas and Mercer and was released on September 1st of this year. Hell comes to Southern California every October. It rides in on searing Santa Ana winds that Blast at near hurricane force, igniting voracious wildfires. Master thief Danny Cole longs for the flames. A tsunami of fire is exactly what he needs to pull off a daring crime and avenge a fallen friend. As the most devastating firestorms in Los Angeles history scorch the hills of Malibu, Relentless arson inspector Walter Sharp and his wild card of a new partner, Andrew Walker, a former U.S. Marshal, suspect that someone set a massive blaze intentionally, a terrifying means to an unknown end. Unaware that Sharp and Walker are closing in fast. We are pleased to welcome Lee Goldberg to the program. Our conversation has already begun. Number one, this book was very good, except for one thing. The the wall-to-wall erotic sex throughout the book? Yes, that was a little bit of it. But did you have to make me feel so old when you have to describe who... Simon Templer was, <laughs> who Perry Mason was. I was sitting there going, oh, no, people know all those names. But I guess no, I use my daughter, who's 28, as a barometer. You say Dirty Harry to her, and she says, who is he and why is he dirty? You know, she has no idea who these people are. Perry Mason, Simon Templer, Walter Cronkite. So if you're going to use dated references, you know, I... Your audience can't see me right now, but I look extraordinarily young and very. Oh yes, she but, do. But I'm, I'm much older than I appear. And, Not a uh, day some, over twenty. Yeah, some of my references may be a tiny bit dated. Well, you were all over the TV here about a month ago. Oh, the home invaders! You had your ninja warriors come visiting. Yeah. I said, oh, that's got to be in a book next time. <laughs> it is. It's a book I wrote before the ninjas showed up, which was kind of scary. Oh, did you hire them for the purpose? Or? No, but there are people who've accused me of that. I have a book coming out in January called Dream Town. It's the fifth Eve Ronan uh, novel. Oh, and it's all about. It's all about these Chilean burglary tourists that are hitting homes in Calabasas that abut open space. And I describe how they dress and how they work. And I received the galleys. And about 48 hours later, some of these guys showed up in my backyard. <laughs> I very heroically fended them off by turning on all the lights in my backyard, picking up a phone and calling the police for help. Ah, that's the way to fight crime. It was either that or run out in my Speedo holding a steak knife and hope that would scare them off. <laughs> The listeners can't see us, but I like the way you fog out your background. I want to have my background be vivid and fog out myself. <laughs> <laughs> we were on a call with somebody else who had, they had made it look like they were in a pub. I liked that. Huh. 
And mine doesn't do anything because I have an old computer and I'm an old person. <laughs> Just as You're an old person? I only did this because I was told I was going to be on with two 19-year-old hotties. Oh, okay. are also on TikTok. You're not on TikTok <laughs> either? No. No, no sorry. No. Oh, damn. Keep well, it's been nice. Got to go. <laughs> <laughs> we keep saying we're going to do that, but just haven't uh, done it yet. So, so ninjas, I hear. Yes. I scared them off single-handedly by picking up the phone and yelling, help! I, I called Tracy and said, turn on the TV. You've got to see who's on the news. <laughs> but made me laugh. I mean, this story went viral. I did probably three dozen interviews. What killed me watching the Inside Edition one was the way they led into it with you know several ads in the hour preceding. Tonight on Inside Edition, you'll never believe who was hit by burglars. What do you mean you'll never believe? Major celebrity hit by burglars. Who was someone else hit besides me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, time we talked to you, we were discussing Lost Hills, which I understand is the same fire that's burning in Malibu burning. Hills. Was, but yes, it is. It is the same fire. When I came up with this book and this heist, you know, pulling off this major heist in the middle of a wildfire, I thought, oh, crap, I can't do that because I'd just be repeating myself. I have already done it. And then it dawned on me, why don't I lean into that? Make it the same fire, just from a different perspective. So if you read Malibu Burning first and then read Lost Hills, you'll see Lost Hills in a whole different light. Wow. And I make some vague, oblique references to Eve Ronan and Lost Hills, the, the events in Lost Hills in, in Malibu Burning. Yeah. However... In the sequel to Malibu Burning, which is already written, it'll be out in September of 2024, Ashes Never Lie, it's a Eve Ronan crossover. So she'll actually be in the book. With Walker? With Walker and Sharp, yes. Oh, cool, cool. They make a good team. Uh, yes, they I do. So. Now, we talked to you on Lost Hills, not about... You invited us out for your hot tub, and we were very concerned that the ninjas destroyed the hot tub when they were no, there, no. did they? No, they did not destroy uh, the hot tub. We haven't gotten out there yet, but we're <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> I was just in Utah. I was close. <laughs> How much research did it take for you to do this book? It had it took, to be a lot. I was cursing myself for coming up with a book about arson investigators, because the problem is... I don't know anything about arson. All I know about fire is striking a match and holding it to something <laughs> flammable. So I had to invest a small fortune in fire investigation textbooks and read a ton of textbooks, watch a million videos, and I interviewed arson investigators. In fact, I don't want to give this away, but the method I used for creating fires in Malibu Burning hasn't been done before. And wow. I, I reached out to arson investigators saying, would this work? What Allison uses to fend off the bad guy? Yes, yes. Ah. Your, your, your mom is itching to give it away. She just can't know, stop herself. I know, I know. I, I got to watch her. <laughs> yes, the, the method I used was a lighter and dry wood. Anyway, I uh, came up with a unique method, and I called up this ATF agent and told him, I don't know whether you have a family audience, so I won't use the profanity he used on me, but... When I told him this method, he went, Felder garb. What? <laughs> Felder garb. What, why are you swearing at me? He says, because it would work. I went, oh, ah. He said, we wouldn't be able to detect it, I don't think. I yeah, said, oh, maybe so you shouldn't you put it. You want me to change it? But... <laughs> and he said, no, no. Now, now I just have to go do now, it. Now, uh, for our audience out there, if you are an arsonist, I don't want you, this book isn't a how-to. <laughs> So the arson investigator went out and committed, or committed, set fires, like the one in my book, in their own testing area outdoors, uh -huh. and sent me videos. Because they tested what was left over to see what wow. circumstances they'd be able to find evidence of it and how they would reveal it. So now if they ever come across a fire that seems a little bit suspicious in, in the same way that mine does, they'll know what to look for and what to test for. Well, you can't get more accurate than that. Wow. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. Have you ever used something in a book and got a call or somebody reached out that you had something wrong? Oh, all the time. There are people who call, <laughs> up, and, not call up and email me and say I got something wrong. 
I thought you were going in a different direction with that question, which was, have I ever been called up by law enforcement because someone used a method in one of my books to commit a crime? Oh. And yes, I have. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it was years ago. It was for one of my diagnosis murder novels. I can't remember which one. That's what happens when you look very young, but you're actually very old, where the investigators want to know if I ever had contact with this individual and you know where I got the idea for this. And Now, is there anybody that you base Danny Cole on? You mean the suave, brilliant, I mean, other than sophisticated, yourself. sexy con man? Yeah. Clearly, I just looked in the mirror. How could you even ask that <laughs> question? It's so, so obvious that it, it's it's me, you know? I mean, Harry Grant, Simon Templer, Lee Goldberg, yeah. all in the same breath. No, I mean, Danny Cole is sort of an amalgamation of Thomas Crown and Remington Steele and Brett Maverick and so many other characters I enjoyed when I was growing up. So that homely bunch. That homely bunch, yes. <laughs> but you know, anyone under the age of 50 has no idea who I'm referring to. Well, now people think Perry Mason is some hard-boiled P.I. because of that god-awful HBO show. I did when it came out. And no, thank you. It's like turning the $6 million man into a car mechanic. I mean, what the hell are they thinking with that? So, Lee, what are you working on now? AI. I'm just sitting here <laughs> hitting the button on AI this until it turns really out you, something it? good. <laughs> no, this is not him. Malibu Burning's out now. I have a new novel coming out in a couple of weeks called Calico, which is a modern day police procedural and a period Western set in 1883 that share the same dead body. And then in January, I have a book coming out called Dreamtown, which is the fifth Eve Ronan novel. Can't wait for that one. I love her. <laughs> and then in September 2024, I have Ashes Never Lie, the second Sharp and Walker novel and Eve Ronan crossover. And I'm about to start work any minute now on the third Sharp and Walker book, which would come out in spring of 2025. Wow. Well, you don't have anything else to do. <laughs> no, no, I mean... I mean, as a male escort who's lousy at it, I got nothing but time on my hands and a lot of disappointing And customers. the ninjas are scared of you, so they yeah. won't. Yeah. He's a crime fighter by night and a writer by day. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that has to show up in your one of your books. It has to. It, it already has. I was it's telling your mom good. it's in Dreamtown. Very good. You just said something about one that's coming out that's uh, in 1883 or something. Is that your first period piece or a uh, historical piece? Yes and no. I did a novel many years ago called Mr. Monk in Trouble. Shifted back and forth between one of Monk's ancestors in the gold rush and Monk in present day. Oh, that's very contrasting. Good. And it's sort of the same thing I'm doing now without Monk. I mean, I have a story in 1883 and a, a police procedural set in, in the same area in Barstow a disgraced LAPD detective who's now working for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, basically exiled to hell trying to seek redemption. She's killing time and in a bottle and in bed with all these different guys, but comes across a homicide case that shakes her belief system and forces her to look at the world in a new way. Well, that sounds really good. Meanwhile, I'm telling the story of a stranger wandering into a desolate mining camp in the middle of the Mojave Desert trying to find a way to survive in a land that's totally inhospitable to human life, the Silver Camp of Calico. It was a book I wrote during the pandemic. It's a book I've wanted to write for years, and it's a book I've been afraid to write for years, but I finally did it, and it'll be interesting to see whether it's embraced or whether it destroys my career. Have them send us a copy so we can read it. If you're on NetGalley, you can download one now. And, okay. Uh, All right. And it's called Calico? Calico. Okay, now here's an important question for me. Yes, it's my real hair and my teeth. It's been nice talking to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my question, no, is Danny going to be in the next book? In the next book? The one that's that's coming out in September? Uh, no, oh. Walker and... and what? Well, that's the next book coming out in September. Okay. Ash has never lied. He's, he's okay. not in that. He's not in that one? I think I am. He's but, not in but that he, one. Oh, okay. Later. <laughs> ever gets out of prison. Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I He might be, as we speak, appearing in the book I'm writing now, but I'll take the fifth on that. A fifth of what? 
<laughs> That's our speed. <laughs> you have to watch out for that dye. Oh, yeah, you're in California. They're going to cut out all your food. <laughs> no, no, no. They're just cutting out the poisonous red dye that'll kill you that was outlawed in lipstick in 1970, but some candy companies think it's fine to slather their Skittles with. Yeah. Uh, they're also putting DDT on the candy, but that's okay. Health food. Come on. <laughs> Lee, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. I just love this book. I thought it was so well done. I can't wait for the next Eve Ronan book. She's my favorite. Oh, thank you. My <laughs> wife, she's French, and she reads the books going, wow. I did not get it. You <laughs> seem to understand women in your books, and you're so clueless in real life. I want you to have a husband who's <laughs> Ronan, not you. You enjoy the rest of your summer. Keep the ninjas at bay. I will do my very best. <laughs> I wish you all the success in the world with your books and everything else, too. Oh, and thank you. Okay, Lee. Well, we won't keep you any longer. Okay. I know you've got crime to fight. <laughs> I do. It's a writing. That 1883 book. I am excited about that one. You can read that right now. It's available for pre-order at Amazon. Oh, okay. Out, it's coming out November 7th, I think. So. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Very good. All right, Lee. Thank All you right. again. Thanks for having me. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We thank Lee for joining us. It's always a lot of fun to talk to him. And now it's time for trivia. Last week's question was, the author John Dickinson Carr is famous for writing what? A. The Most Reissued Mysteries, B, Mysteries with Hints Given Throughout the Story, C, Impossible Mysteries or Locked Room Mysteries, or D, First Person Mysteries. The answer is C, Impossible or Locked Room Mysteries. John Dickinson Carr is credited with writing the first impossible mystery. Carr is generally regarded as one of the greatest writers of so-called golden age mysteries, complex, plot-driven stories in which the puzzle is paramount. He was influenced in this regard by the works of Gaston Leroux and by the Father Brown stories of G.K. Chesterton. He was a master of the so-called locked room mystery in which a detective solves apparently impossible crimes. The Dr. Fell mystery, The Hollow Man, 1935, usually considered Carr's masterpiece, was selected in 1981 as the best locked room mystery of all time by a panel of 17 mystery authors and reviewers. This week's question is, which mystery author used the synonym Mark Sadler, John Crow, Carl Decker, and William Arden? A. Dan Brown B. John Grisham C. Mickey Spillane or D. Michael Collins. Tune in next week for the answer. Well, that wraps up another episode of Dark and Stormy Book Club. Be sure and join us next week. Be sure and join us next week. And remember, life would be boring without a little mystery. Bye! Bye. <laughs>